Should we start? Yeah. So, hello everybody. My talk is about fixed asynchrony with RxJS. And it's mainly, it's not really about asynchrony and all that stuff. It's more about how you generally work with RxJS and how you can solve difficult problems with that. And I will come back later. So, shortly about me, I'm a software developer for Eon. I'm part of the RxJS core team since a year or something like that. I'm also organizing a meetup, much smaller than this one. I think last time we were like 20 people or something like that. But it was great. And I'm also absolutely into barbecue. So if everyone has receipts, tips, tricks, I'm open for everything. So back to RxJS. <laughs> RxJS, I know it, it's really difficult and complicated. And especially asynchronous programming doesn't make it better. So, my idea is, because I'm super bad at slides, like you see, that's the best slide I have in the slide deck, um, to mainly focus on live coding might not be the best idea, but we will see. So let's shortly go to common problems you have when you're working with asynchronous, uh, asynchronous scenario. So the very common one is that you have a flaky connection, so your data source is flaky, returning sometimes data, sometimes not, and you have somehow to work with that. Also. Most of the enterprise application I saw work with some kind of aggregation of multiple data sources. So you have multiple databases, you have multiple endpoints, multiple whatever, and you need the data from all that. And somehow need to aggregate that. Also, I think I never saw one application which didn't use a poly mechanism in some way. So RxJS is super great. It's like three lines of code and it's working. And also you can run into the situation where you have large data sets. And I think this was the, and it wasn't the last slide, and also the very, very most important one is when to use SwitchMan. <laughs> well, no one does. No one knows. <laughs> that was my slides. Come, let's come to code. So there is the code, and probably a little bit, that's better, right? So the idea is I have multiple scenarios, and depending on the time, I have an hour left, I think. So depending on the time, I will go through those scenarios one by one. I will start with the most complex one, which is a paginated list, rendering the list inside a table, and as soon as you scroll down to the bottom of the list, we will ask for the next page, and so on and so forth. I hope this goes well. So, the very first thing is that we start with the from event operator. I slightly cheated. I also have it in the local history and in the git history, so I'm, I think I backed up here. So we start with the from event, take all the scroll events, and first we want to sample them. Because the scroll event is triggered like 100 times, you just scroll once, and you have 100 notification. So we use sample time with, I don't know, 300 seconds. So we just get every 300 seconds a notification out of it. A very great performance tweet for scrolling. So the next thing we want to do is to map, because we are not really interested in all the values and what's up? Uh, what's the difference between the sample time and the bounds? No, it's, so, it's sorry for questions. <laughs> You're very welcome. I will come back later. Okay, thank okay? You. It's very similar. Imagine it's a uh, bounds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we are not really interested in all the values inside the event. So what we are doing is we are taking the event and just using a proper fat arrow function and say event target node is it's starting good. I think it's scroll element. Target scroll element? I think it's target scroll element. Let me do a short check. That's not cheating. It's just a double check. <laughs> I'm focusing. <clears throat> no one saw that. We have fit this. So now a target scrolling element. Lucky guess. <laughs> so afterwards we have now our source observable with the from event, which just emits scrolling events. What we need is to have an event triggered as soon as we are scrolling to the very top, uh, very top and to the very bottom of the page. So we have uh, scroll down and scroll up event, 
and I think I implemented already helpers, is scroll down, no cheating. And we use map too because we are still not interested in the value of it, we're just interested in the event. That an event happened, it's scrolling to the very down of the page. And we are using, I'm still not good with maps. So scroll direction, super type. It's not a plain string here. <laughs> so, and we have something very similar for the scroll up event. Change the string here, which isn't a string, it's for sure it's typed and enum and totally safe to use. <laughs> so, we're now having our triggers and in our paging on scroll observable, which is decently prepared here, we are just merging that. So as soon as one of those emit a notification, we go on. So the first thing we I knew it. T doesn't usually follow. <laughs> Sparking T. So the first thing we do is we are using scan. Scan is a very cool operator which has a local state. And we are was something with page, the method I created. Not aggregate page, count page. So after the, not after this talk, but next week I will release the slides on Twitter. Then you can also check out the source code and dive into all the helps I created. But it's mainly, mainly about the idea how to aggregate different operators and work with that, not about the actual implementation. And the cool stuff you can do with Narcissus for sure. So we're having the count page. So for those who are not aware of how scan is working, most of you will know array reduce. Somehow, it's very simple. And we have something, an initial page count. So every time I'm now scrolling to the, down, uh, to the bottom of the page, the count is counting up. And if I go to, to the top, it's vice versa. And so on. So we're having this. With this page, we can now go on and ask our backend service, which is already prepared, and I can't code anything there. It's working. So now we're coming to an interesting question. We're having our observable and want to map it to a different observable. That's the point where switch map or something else could come into play. <coughs> switch map is in general a good idea as long as you're talking about fetching data, but here we are mostly relying on um, user events. For those scenarios, uh, exhaust map is a much better choice because it will wait till the HTTP request is completed. So even though you multiple times go to the bottom of the page, it won't redo a request to the backend server. So the switch map would. So we have an exhaust map. The signature itself is totally the same, just the way it's working internally is different. So we're having our value, and of this value, we are just interested in the page. And I think I have something like it. I didn't copy the URL. I'm not cheating. <coughs> but in the history, there's a magic URL, which I should be. Somewhere right there it should be. Just copy those three lines. Mm -hmm. No one saw it, right? Oh. Exactly. <laughs> oh. So, out of nowhere, a fully implemented exhaust map appeared, and we're having our HTTP call requesting. Uh, for those, it's a beer list, it's a random generated data of beers. Green tea. Sure, green tea. So, one thing to add here, we are mapping the value coming out of the response. We have a weird structure because the extra data we are interested in is inside a response property. But, very important to know is that you're in, if you're talking about error scenarios, so the way it's currently implemented, as long as one of those HTTP requests would throw an error, our complete scroll pagination thingy would be dead. Nothing would happen anymore. You can scroll as long as you want, nothing would happen. And very often in projects I see stuff where it's a bracket. There's one, there's one, there I need to go. 
very often I see stuff like this. That's kind of good. It could be worse. It used to be worse before. So we're having catch error. Catch error is triggered as soon as an error is thrown, and we can we can do something with that. In it. Sorry. Sure it is. Yeah, there are multiple types. Yeah. We can't do this with one type. So as soon as an error is thrown, we are just returning an empty observable, not interested in values generated. But what would happen now is that we once catch the error, and afterwards our observable would be dead. Still not the best scenario, better than before, where we just let the error slip through all and crash our application. But what we really want to do is to have this catch error here inside the other pipe, and that's why we actually need multiple pipes. I should use proper intention. <coughs> I hate things. <laughs> so, I copied that, right? Oh. So, what happened now is that we catch the error inside this inner observable, and with the next scroll event happening, we create a new HTTP observable, and we're totally good to go. So, this is much better than it was before. So, now we're having just our data, our, and we got, just get the latest page of or request it. What we want is to catch some of the values, right? You don't want to, every time there's a new page, you want to render the whole page, but you want to somehow cache like three pages or something like that, and just append them or prepend them. And therefore, I prepared something, you know this cooking shows where out of nowhere there's a whole dish and bam, that's the same. So, again, we're using scan here, scan is Besides tab, I think my most favorite operator, tab is much better. So what we now do is we are calling a helper method, aggregate pages, and passing initial aggregated pages there. I can shortly go into that, but but it's mostly array mutation stuff, and no one is interested in that. So I will just go back, and this is better than I expected it, honestly. So what we now want to do is subscribe to an observable. Actually, 80% of the time, nothing happens when you're talking about RHS is because you forgot to, unsubs uh, to subscribe, or because you used interval with, without passing a number to it, also. No, it didn't happen to me, never. <laughs> so we're having our, I think it was scroll, oh, I need to. Something like scroll. What was it? Pages on scroll. Amazing name. And I prepared also a little helper method like render page data. I'm subscribing to subscribing to that. And now fingers crossed it's working. I hope I really got it. So, you might not see it, but one request was made, so that's the one here, and we also forgot one thing. We ignore the rendering stuff for now. No one cares about rendering. RxJS is the magic here. So what we forgot is that we initially also want to load one page, the first page. So we, before that, we start with, I know that it won't fix my error, but that doesn't matter for now. So I will start with, Scroll direction down, just to have an initial trigger, even though no um, scroll event was triggered. But damn. So, okay, let's take a look at why the rendering not work. I think the helper method I prepared a second ago might have a minor mistake. But this should, this should do the trick. Obviously. Have you ever attended a live debug session? That's super interesting. Wait a minute. 
MacBooks are green key safe, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what is going on? So we're having an error. So far so good. It's not ah sure easy. I know. <laughs> Obviously. So the last thing we missed or I missed, you could have noticed also. Is, <laughs> is that we are here returning a full scope object to have all the pages, lists, and everything in there, so we just want to have the list out of it. <clears throat> Please work. It's not the extra response to that. Looks good. Yes! <laughs> And now the even more interesting part is can I scroll through the down? Whoa. <laughs> and so on and so forth. So the implementation is still lacking some minor features like saving the position where you used to be so that you don't jumping around all the time, but minor things. It was mostly about the how you do amazing RHS stuff with scroll, map, scan, tap, and exhaust. So, I still have half the time, that's amazing, so I will go to another example. So this is the most complicated one, which I knew I would screw up, so I'm quite good for now. So let's come to polling. A little bit bigger, but polling. So a polling is actually just an interval, and before I subscribe, I pass a value there. <coughs> Otherwise, it will call the interval with every frame, which is totally amazing and won't screw up your browser. <laughs> Never happened. So, every time this interval happens, we want to pass the... We are not really interested in the value generated by the interval operator. So we could use one of those two operators. For example, switch map is one of the best operators for this scenario, because switch map will unsubscribe as soon as the interval do a retick. So if my HTTP call lasts longer than, or takes longer, longer, not longer, <laughs> longer than a second, then it will just unsubscribe from that and do another call. For sure, this depends how you want to structure your education and your polling mechanism is working. But for the thing I was showing now, <coughs> switch map or switch map 2 is a really good example. You just need to be cautious with switch map if you're doing server-side mutation because then you're running out of, you might run out of sync because your um, call on the back end is still handled but you may unsubscribe and won't get the response and it's really messy if that happens. So, I think I have a helper here. I do, but I forgot the URL. I won't cheat, but have a quick look. Something with localhost, yeah. That's the thing I do also, and I think it's port 8080. But that, that's it. So in this presentation before, or in the preparation, I use SwitchMap, but SwitchMap 2 is much better from a performance point of view because we are not interested in value. And also I think I let the catch error. You can do much cooler stuff than just uh, using catch error and returning nothing, but for this demonstration, it's okay. at least for me it's okay. So we're having catch error, getting some error, not interested in it, and returning it. And besides the fact that I need to map the response again to have something like response. And if I use this one, oh, I forgot the name, I think it was something flaky. Do we want to check if my other helper method is working? We do. Because it has the best name, <coughs> render everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at naming things. Fingers crossed. I need to refresh. It's still not working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
by the way, no one of you is listening. <laughs> I have to use polling and not flake here. That's another thing. <laughs> You see, it's working. Easy. And just for you to know, this fancy fancy animation, I'm also not bad in designing slides, but I'm super good at animations. Um, just demonstrate the newly added item. So if I'm fast, it just takes a second. We see that the new added values to the list are red. Isn't CSS awesome? I have no clue about CSS, but it's working. So I still got 10 minutes left. So now you can decide whether you want to have some way of prefetching data, optimistic prefetching, which isn't really, really, well, it's prepared but not trained, but we will see, or handling a flaky connection. Heads up, some interaction to get you motivated. Then. Who's for flaky? Can one count? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Who's for optimistic prefetching? Okay, I don't need to count for that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's going to be flaky. And it's also working better because I at least tried it once. So I'm having an endpoint and I forgot to that. But we have the endpoint. So we are actually just doing our HTTP call. Can you zoom in a bit? Just for you. Yeah, thank you. So we are doing our HTTP call with the URL I forgot, but local history covers me. So we are doing our HTTP flaky, endpoint flaky read, I could have thought about that. So the flaky implementation on the backend side is super sophisticated, so I think Two times it will time out, and one, the third try will work. So, to make it easier to see the error, I want to generate a timeout. Timeout is thrown as long as the no value is generated within a certain time span. So, I can specify like five milliseconds, and with, if there's no notification within five milliseconds, then we will get an error. Are you waiting for something? So, this will likely fail. Even though I'm using locals, it might not be there within five milliseconds. But let's see. So, I see the table. And. So, for those of you who don't see it, it's an error. I'm just not able to zoom, scroll, whatever. Doesn't matter. There's an error. So, the timeout is working, but what we now want to do is, if within a certain timeout, we call time in amount, span, time span sounds much better. So, if there's no notification within a certain time span, because we knew our connection is flaky and we don't want the user to wait like ages, so if there's no Notification within that five milliseconds. I will slightly increase that later on, but we will try a retry. There are for sure in RHS there are multiple operators for handling retry mechanisms, but we will go with retry when. And retry when takes the error and returns an observable with something. And here we want to use delays to have like. Yeah, the delay is also a very difficult word. So, what's wrong? Comma. Rare. Time, time out, time out, time, time out. Ah, and here. It's more programming. So, what now happens if, if an error occurs, then wait for a second to give the server some time to recover, and after a second, retry the HTTP code. I really hope it works. Amazing. It's not working. Not. Okay. I have no clue what this website can use. So is that the one when you click on that that you can do this plus Is it WebSocket connection or HTTP connection? Because oh. your WebSocket has a WebSocket activated. Command plus. 
Nope. Can you do this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like to. Honestly, it would. It's just not feasible. So, okay, let's check what I did wrong. Let's have, uh, let's have a quick look in my backup. I think I knew it, but I just want to double check. Not this one. We try when? Oh, I forgot the map again. <laughs> but it shouldn't make a difference. Who's map? Respawns, 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 super naming conventions, I know. Respawns, 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 respawns. And I'm using Play TV here, and I'm subscribing to that. It should, should work. Obviously. Amazing. Okay, now back to the debug session. I have four minutes left. I'm totally in time. So let's do a compare with master. Not that my local history ever liked me, but master is slightly better sometimes. And without noticing, I will do a copy paste. <coughs> But there's still no HTTP records in there because you have a WebSocket tab activated. <laughs> I think it's right. You've got what it filtered by WebSocket. Yeah. Where? A little bit Yes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's give it another try to see the actual error. Error. Oh, come on. Okay, five seconds. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you see that? Uh -huh. Like I said, twice it fails. Yeah. So, and let's. let's. <laughs> 